back to Arthvimarsh. If you like the content of these videos, please support our channel by subscribing to our content. In this lecture, we are going to understand the fundamentals of financial mathematics. The topics in this video are organized into two sections. In the first part of the video, I'll be explaining the role of interest rate in the financial mathematics, then how to go about applying the concept of net present value and the internal rate of return. And finally, by the end of these videos, we'll be able to apply these concepts to assess investment alternatives. In the first part of the video, we are going to understand two key concepts which are very fundamental to financial mathematics and economic analysis. That is the time value of money. What are the factors which basically drive the value of money over time? And then we'll be shifting our focus to the concept of interest rates in terms of understanding what is simple interest, compound interest, the difference between nominal and effective interest rate. This we will be very frequently encountering in financial or economics text or even in the news you will be encountering these terms during the debates and opinions. And finally, we will also be talking about the concept of intra-year compounding, which basically means that what if your returns on investment tend to change within year, like for example, after a quarter, or you are investing uh, in terms of days, after n number of days, you are getting a return uh, or with an interest rate I. So how, how, how those returns are going to vary or how to go about calculating those returns. So we will be taking up those aspects. Now let's move on to the first part that is the time value of money. The time value of money. What does this mean? So this concept basically is very fundamental to mathematical finance and economic analysis. To understand this, let's begin with the claim that a dollar today is more valuable than a dollar received in the future. Now, what does this mean? Before we understand the key intuition, let's let's try to look at it from an example. So assume that you won a lottery worth one million dollars. All right. And you can claim the prize money now or decide to receive the amount later. Now, what happened in the process? is that you have these two options. If you decided to claim the prize amount today, what you can do is that you can take that $1 million and save it in the bank account, which will be earning you a 5% of interest rate per year. I mean, we are assuming this, okay? So if you get a 5% of minimum interest rate of 5% on your savings amount, so by the end of the year, you will be having $1,050,000, right? But let's say that you decided not to claim the prize today and you decided that you will be receiving that amount later, okay? So you told the lot lottery managers, etc., that uh, you don't want it today, so let's postpone it. But what happens in the process is that after one year, like, if you had deposited in the savings account, you would have ended up with $1,050,000. But now, because you are accepting $1 million after an year, you already have foregone that potential 5% interest rate which you have earned if you had invested that already or saved that already in your savings account, right? So as a consequence, what you have foregone or lost or what we call as the opportunity cost is 50,000 here, all right? So now let's get back to understand the intuition that what makes this claim very strong. So the claim was asserting that a dollar today, okay, a dollar today. So the value today for this was 1 million, right? It was 1 million and this is definitely far more valuable than the dollar which is being received in the future. Why? Because this 1 million could have additionally earned, right, 5% of this 1 million dollars, 
right? And you could have ended up with one million fifty thousand dollars, right? So, but because of your decision to defer that claim for one year, what happened is that you are ending up with only one million in your pocket or in your account. But why is this happening? Because as an individual, you have the time preference. These two set of decisions are preference based, right? The second, the later one had a preference about claiming the prize a year later, while the former had immediately claimed. So preference played an important role here. Number one. Number two is that it's, it's very common as an investor or as an individual to acknowledge the fact that inflation is something which tends to erode the value of money over time, right? That is the increase in price over time, they tend to erode the value of your money, right? So a dollar today, which you have is more valuable than dollar in the future. And the third reason is very important one, that is the uncertainty about the future. What do we mean by that? Whenever there is going to be an element of uncertainty in the decision making, it means that there is a potential risk associated with that decision. All right. So because an element of risk is always going to be associated, uh, th this is something which will definitely, definitely drive an individual's decision uh, on his or her investment uh, uh, um, horizon as well as the prospects, right? And this is something which we will be very frequently encountering in the subsequent videos also that how to go about incorporating the element of uh, uncertainty in the financial decision making. So we will be reflecting on that uh, in the later section. Now further uh, interest rates reflect these three factors. So what I mean by that is that the interest rates which we witness in the markets, like for example, in the case of lottery, I, I was assuming that 5% interest rate on savings was there. So interest rates, uh, they reflect these three factors that we have discussed in the previous slide. Uh, they reflect basically our time preference, that is our preference for consuming today, right? or in case of lottery, the claim of the price today, right? Uh, and finally, they also talk about the expectation about the inflation, right? And the element of risk or uncertainty about the future events. So this is all reflected in our interest rates, right? And to illustrate this, that the role which is played by these interest rates uh, in terms of the price of the money over time, uh, let us consider a small example from the previous, uh, I mean, uh, from the previous case only we will be taking uh, the values and let us try to understand. Now think of this as the time axis, okay? We have two periods starting from period zero to period one and you as an individual had $1 million. Okay, currently you had $1 million. Now what happens is that as an individual, as uh, we discussed the case of a lottery, so if you invested that amount for an year, you were able to earn an interest rate of 5%. So say for example, your I was 5%. So you earned an interest rate of 5% and what you ended up with is the future value. Here PV means the present value and FV means the future value. So what, what we get as a future value is the sum of 1 million plus 5% of 1 million, right? And this is what we call as the concept of future value, right? And now if you compare your future value comes out to be 1 million 50,000, which is greater, I mean, after the end of an year, which is greater as compared to the 1 million, if a person decided to receive 1 million here, right, he had already foregone these, this interest rate, right? I mean, the $50,000. So the value of money, which was there today is definitely not going to be equal what it will be tomorrow, right? 
today it's always going to be greater than what it's going to be tomorrow and this is because of this interest rate which basically drives the price of money over time now this expression is basically coming out from this expression what we have done is simply represented it in a simplified form that your future value was the sum of your present value which you initially had plus the interest rate which you had earned on the initial investment amount that is PV like 1 million was the PV and 5% was the interest rate and this can be rewritten as PV equals PV you are taking common so it will be 1 plus interest rate right so this expression has been simplified nothing else so this is your future value equals present value to the product of 1 plus interest rate right uh, please note that this expression okay so this will be repeating again and again throughout the videos or in the subsequent topics which we will be taking up so uh, it's very important to note that what it's trying to relate is is the amount of money which is sitting at different time periods like we have taken from period 0 to 1 it can be for period 2 as well where you will be further adding the interest rate uh, with, with uh, I mean multiplying it with the present value at time period 1 and so on right so what we call as nominal interest rate will be labeled with uh, this I here okay so this I is basically implying nominal interest rates and what they reflect uh, are these three factors that is the preference of the people expectation about inflation uncertainty about future events i know this is being repeated but yes please uh, keep this thing in mind that what basically the nominal interest rate is accounting for so it's accounting for these three factors now if you observe in this figure so like i mentioned that our nominal interest rate which are being denoted by i they are accounting for these three factors all right and these three factors in mathematical terms if we have to summarize so what we are mentioning here is that because we know that interest rate reflect the preferences so they are being implied in terms of real interest rate under the nominal interest rate uh, the real component okay real remuneration uh, which is there or the return which is there so it's being accounted by that then about the erosion of the value of money because individuals or agents who are engaged in the financial decision making they acknowledge the fact that there is an erosion there is an element of inflation present okay so expectation about inflation they drive the change in nominal interest rate and that is denoted as pi e and finally about the uncertainty element which has risk associated with it so for that what we have to account for is the risk premium which is pi which is basically accounting for that risk component and this equivalence which we are summarizing here that is our nominal interest rate as a function okay this is a function of our real interest rate our inflation expectations and the uncertainty or risk premium okay so this is how we go about denoting this right so always remember that there are three variables which are embedded in this nominal interest rate component i okay that is the real interest the inflation and the risk premium so these three factors are there